Hello everybody and welcome back to another Quick Dwarf Fortress tutorial. In this video I'm going to be teaching you how to make a very simple but also very advanced little piece of machinery. We are going to be building and constructing and completing a fully automated self-enclosed powered mist generator. Now this is a bit of an advanced technique so it might be a bit overwhelming at first but hear me out. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to be preparing this small zone here for the mist generator. But in order to do this we're going to need to build some things and we're going to need to queue up some items. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this job for barrels over here and we are going to make corkscrews. Okay? Enormous wooden corkscrew. Now I'm going to queue up three of these. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six probably is what we're going to need. Corkscrew times six. And now that we have six queued up here, we're also going to queue up six uh, wooden pipes. So now normally in a larger fortress, you would just simply be doing all of these at once in the manager, but because we're doing this manually, it's much quicker to just do it this way. Now what we're going to need is we're going to need a space that is a layer beneath the ground for our tavern. We're also probably going to need some more wood, so I'm going to get some more wood chopping down while we're at it. But we're going to need some space for our meeting zone. Now as you can see we have this little garden right here, so I think right about here would do just fine for our tavern. We're going to kind of dig around this little zone here, and we're going to have a little entryway so that our still can bring drinks directly in, and we're going to want some stairs going down from the surface. Now, of course, this is all for demo purposes. This is not exactly the way I would normally build a fort. But we're going to let this all dig out, and once this has all been dug out, I will continue speaking. All right, so now that our corkscrews are getting finished up and our little space for our tavern down here has been dug out, what we're going to do next is we are going to dig some holes in the ground. Now, kind of the idea behind this is we want to create a space where water can move freely. So what we're going to do is we're going to look kind of here. This is going to be our little tavern. We're going to dig out a hole through the ground using the channel tool with the dig tool. We're going to go up by two, we're going to go over by two, and we're going to go down by two. Now that we've got that set up, there's a few more workshops we're going to need. Specifically, we're going to need a uh, stone worker, which is going to be placed right here. And we're also going to need a mechanics shop because we're going to need... I think looking at this for mechanism, we are going to grab a, like I said, the stone worker shop and also the mechanics shop, which I can never find in this screen for some reason. So we're going to get those two workshops built and we're going to get these holes dug. Now that our shops are constructed, we're going to queue a few things up. I'm going to queue up blocks and we're going to need four of these. And we're also going to need mechanisms. We're going to need four of these. So four rock mechanisms and four rock blocks have been queued up. After those rock blocks are over, we're also going to need four statues. So might as well get those queued up while everything else is under construction. Because, fun fact, you actually get four blocks per boulder. We're not actually going to need to queue up all four of these. We can just get rid of them. Because bang, see? We have four blocks. All of the blocks that we need. So they can just get to work on those statues instead. Now what we're going to take is we're going to take our screw pumps from the build screen in the machines and liquid section. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect these four little holes in the ground that we dug, right? Now you can make one of these as big as you want, and, ambish as, and, and as ambitious as you want. But for us, all that we need is these four pumps. I did make six parts initially because I wasn't sure exactly how big I wanted to make it for this tutorial, I'll be honest. But now that I know, we're just putting it together. So we got the first one. So this is going to go from this side over here to over here. Then the next one is going to go from... Uh, from south to north, so it's going to pump from here to up here. And then the third one is going to go uh, kind of from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen. And then the final one is going to go from north to south, down. Now, once again, these require a uh, corkscrew, a pipe section, and a block to build. They're very easy. Once you have those, we're now going to go into the mechanism section of the work screen again, and we're going to grab gear assemblies. I'm going to place a couple of these. We're going to place one here, and then one right across from it. We're going to need a total of three here, because we're going to want to connect these two together as well as those two together. So this is going to be connecting all of this. Now, you can kind of see a little machine is building here, right? What we're going to do is right next to this, or alternatively right above it, either could work, we are going to connect power to this. Now you can get power from whatever location you want. You can get it from a water wheel. You could even pump these manually with dwarves if you really wanted. So for our source of power for this video, we are going to be using a windmill. Now this windmill is just going to be placed right next to it. Windmills on average generate about 
50 to 80 power. We might need to make two of them. If you actually click on the machine setup that you have constructed, it will tell you the power need. As you can see, we need 55 power. And I could also just click this and tell them to pump it manually, and we could pump all four manually and use this as some sort of like weird dwar dwarven training gym. But we are going to use a windmill. We're gonna place it right here. Now, windmills can be connected from right next to them, from, from right next to a thing. So I could simply place it right next to it like this. We could also go one layer above, and as long as there's four floors supporting everything except for the very center tile, it could power from above, or we could place it further away up on a wall somewhere and use axles to power it. But for this, we're just simply going to connect it this way. I will also, while this is constructing, quickly queue up an axle and a separate windmill to show you what that looks like. When you have a windmill constructed, you can connect an axle like this, vertical or horizontal. Hor horizontal axles are quite easy. You can just simply flip directions on them and then click and drag to connect it to the pump. Now, while this windmill is constructing itself, we're going to go directly beneath the actual setup here and we are going to place our statues. So statue number one, looks like we're still waiting on one to be constructed, but statue number two and statue number three. And I think we're still waiting on one. Yes. So once the last statue is there, we'll get her constructed. So now all of our statues are queued up and we're still waiting on the windmill. The reason I'm placing these statues is because once this system is running, it could cause instant spontaneous waterboarding or alternatively, uh, the dwarves to collide with the water that's going to be falling and creating our mist. And it could cause them to displace the water. So we need to refill, which we really don't want to do unless absolutely necessary. So now, that this is powering, we can see that we are going to need a second windmill. So I'm just gonna quickly build one and I think the game's about to save because we're about to hit a season change. So now that the second windmill is set up, we can see that the whole thing is generating a total of 80 power and all of our gears are turning. So now the final step in this little project, what we are going to do is we are going to make a pit pond zone. So we're gonna go to the zone screen, we're gonna go to pit pond and we are gonna click here and over the edge. We're gonna accept it. Now, by default, it's going to be considered a pit, a place where you throw things into. But we don't want that. We want them to fill it with water. This is a pond. So I'm going to set it as a pond, and now we are going to wait. And somebody should run over here with a bucket and chuck it into this location quite quickly. And there it is. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to hit Z again, and we're going to pause this area. Because that should be enough water. Now, let's see what happens. We wait. We wait. Mm, maybe not quite. An oh, there we go. Now that we got enough water, I think actually a second dwarf threw a bucket in there, but now it is considered a, a full pond. Uh, we can delete that pit pond zone, and that is our mist generator. It's actually going to create mist up on this upper layer as well as on this lower layer. So now if I assign this as a meeting area or a tavern, our dwarves will run into it and happily enjoy some of this mist, content being near a waterfall, as well as sometimes they'll, you'll also see relief being near a waterfall. This is one of the fastest ways to improve dwarven moods in Dwarf Fortress is by building an efficient one of these. It even makes the elephants happy. See, they're relieved after being near a waterfall, although we do need to get those out of here. Otherwise, they will run into problems. So some other tips and things you can do with these is you can set them up inside of roofs. You could build walls around them and then put the uh, windmills on top of it. Like I said earlier, you can do these completely underground and power them with water wheels. And there's, of course, many other complicated ways you can set one of these up to work. You can make them as big or as small as you want. Some people say that they really impact frame rate, but not so much in my experience, at least not in this version of the game. Uh, just make sure that you uh, put statues or a piece of furniture uh, in each of these locations. I've also seen people use chest, chests in these locations and then fill them up with containers. Delighted being near a waterfall. Look at how happy these dwarves are. Look at how we've immediately spiked from having some kind of upset dwarves to all happy, considering, like... Uh, somebody died at some point, and their body is somewhere, and I'm not sure where. Well, anyway, if you enjoyed this tutorial, it was probably a little bit longer than the average one, I, I hope that you'll give this channel a follow. And, you know, frankly, um, this channel has grown significantly, and it's made me set my sights on even higher possible goals in the future. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who's jumped onto this channel since Door Fortress is released. We're not going anywhere. I'll keep releasing tutorials as I come up with them, and I will also continue doing various little Let's Plays as well as uploading the VODs from the stream. If you want to follow me on Twitch, you can find me at twitch.tv slash blindirl. And I just want to say thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.